This screencast is going to teach you how to print on a traditional name tag badge, but in a vertical fashion. Instead of doing the landscape, we're going to vertically print on a name tag. Um, what you're looking at is what I achieved today. I was able to print the bell schedule in front of you um, in a vertical fashion, and I'd hate to admit to you how much time and um, brain power I had to apply to achieve this task. So if you're trying to achieve the same goal, maybe this screencast will help you. Before we get started, though, check to make sure that you have the same name tags as me. I'm working from Avery5395 style, and the measurements are 2 and 1 third inches by 3 and 3 eighths inches and um, each sheet has eight name tags on it. So if you don't have the same name tag, stop now and go find something else that might help you out. Let's get a fresh document going. So file new blank document. I'm going to turn it to landscape. I turn it to landscape by going file, page setup, and then choosing the landscape option. I like to see all four corners of the document as I'm working on it. So I'm going to adjust the magnification down to 75%. And now we need to create a table. I do this by going Table, Insert, and then out to Table. Now there's a number of different ways you could achieve this. This is just the way that I have grown accustomed to using. So Table, Insert, Table. The number of columns that you want, you want seven columns and you want three rows then click OK. Place your cursor in that very first cell of the table and then go into Table Properties. Table Properties and click on the tab that says Row and you want to check mark Specify Height and you want that height to be exactly 3.38 and over here on the drop-down menu, you want it to say exactly. And then, I don't know whether this did anything or not, but I uncheck mark allow row to break across pages. Once you're done commanding that row, then you want to go to the column, and you want to say preferred width 2.33, and then you can click OK. Now it's going to look funky for a little bit. Just ride this out for a moment. Go to the next column over and then go into the, the next cell over. Right here. Next one over. Go into your table properties. Click on the row tab and you want to specify height 3.38 exactly, so it remembered that from the last cell, but now you want to go to where it says column, preferred width, you don't want what it's giving you, you want 0.17, and then click OK. And then go to the next column over, and go table, table properties, click on row, you want to specify 3.38 exactly for the row, so that's good. Then go to column, and for column, you want 2.33. Click OK. Go to the next column over. Go into your table properties, and you want to specify, well, row should still remember 3.38, that's good, but go to the column and do 0.17. Next column, Table Properties. The row should still be good, but then go to Column and make that 2.33. Next column, Table Properties. Column, make it uh, 0.17. And then next column, table, table properties, column 2.33. We got that first row done. Don't worry about the margins of the document yet. We'll come to that. Let's go to the second row, right down here, second row. First column, second row. 
table properties. You want that row to be, you want to specify the height of that row to be 0.38 and drop down menu say exactly and then uncheck mark allow row to break across pages. Then I might have clicked out of that too early. Let me go back into my table properties. I'm not going to start the screencast all over at this point. Um, my row was 0.38. My column, yeah, it was actually fine. I didn't need to go back in it. My column needs to be 2.33. Okay, now let's go down to this final row and let's go table, table properties. row, you want to specify the height as 3.38 exactly and unchecked mark allow breaks. Now what did that just do? Oh, that just knocked me off the page. So now let's go up to, if you're knocked off the page, don't worry yet. Let's see if we can adjust the documents uh, settings. Let's go into the margins. So we go format, document, and now I have my margins. For the top I have 0.69. For the bottom I have 0. For the left, I had to tinker around with this a lot, but the left I did 0.66. For the right I did 0.58, gutter is 0, header and footer are both 0.5. So top is 0.69, bottom 0, left 6, 0.66, right 0.58, gutter 0, header and footer are both 0.5. Now I get this cryptic message about my margins being messed up and out of the region and blah, blah, blah. I click ignore. And now our table is back onto the page. The final step of this is we have to make the border of this table invisible. Um, so otherwise the lines will print out and that probably isn't the look that you want. So I'm going to select the entire table. I do that by clicking in this upper uh, left hand corner where that box appears. I go back into my table properties. I go to borders and shading and I tell it none. Now I also make sure where down here it says apply to table. You want to apply that none command to table. Okay, now one final word. Um, if you are fluent in using labels and doing a data merge, you might be used to using the propagate command. I was unable to use the propagate command when I was doing my bell schedule. So what I had to do, I had to do bell schedule and then I, you know, customize the look of it. But then in order to get that into the other cells, I had to manually copy and paste that, which is truly a hassle, I admit. But it achieved the look that I wanted, so I was willing to do that. So um, in order to get the content into the cells, you'll have to do it that way. I hope this helps somebody.